By now, you know everything about the human circulatory system. Now think about this. Do plants also have a system of transporting food and water? Like us, of course they do. Let's learn more about it. At the end of this module, you will be able to understand the process of circulation of water, minerals and food in the plants, define transpirations, define translocation, understand the role of xylem and phloem in the transport of materials in plants. Plants absorb water containing minerals from soil through their roots. The water absorbed by roots and food prepared by leaves are supplied to the remaining parts of the plants by the special plant tissues known as xylem and phloem. The salt solution present in the soil is a dilute salt solution because of large quantity of water. The concentration of ions inside the root is more than the soil. Thus, the cells of the root hairs are hypertonic in nature. So, water moves cosmetically into the roots from the soil. This is called osmosis. Osmosis is a process in which a solution of low concentration moves towards the solution of high concentration. Water reaches then to the xylem. This results in hydrostatic pressure in the xylem. This process is known as root pressure that forces the water up in the plant through the xylem. Here is an interesting activity that you can do on your own. To perform this activity, you need a germinate bajra or mustard seeds on a wet filter paper. After a few days, if you will examine some mustard seedlings, you will observe a mass of fine threads coming from the roots by hand lens. These are root hairs through which water enters the plant. So now you know how plants get their water. But what about the minerals? How do they go up a plant? Plants need many mineral salts for their growth and development. These mineral salts are obtained from the soil along with the water in solution form through the root hairs. The salts are in the form of electrically charged ions. Sodium chloride is in the form of Na+ and Cl- and magnesium sulphate occurs as Mg2 plus and SO. Here is another interesting activity for you by which you can see the effect of the root pressure. Take a regularly watered potted plant and cut the stem portion 1 cm above the ground level. Then connect a glass tube by means of strong rubber tubing as shown in the figure. The size of glass tube should be equal to the size of the stem. Take care while joining the tube and stem being bound tightly. Water cannot escape from the tube. Now pour some water in the glass tube until water level can be seen above the rubber tube. Mark the level of water M in the tube. Keep your arrangement aside for 2 to 3 hours. Then observe and mark the water level M2 in the tube. You will notice that there would be an increase in the water level. The water has climbed up due to the root pressure. However, this pressure is not enough to move water in tall trees. In tall trees, plants use another process known as transpiration, transpiration pull to move water. Plants have tiny holes on their leaves known as the stomata. The purpose of stomata is to drain out water from the plant. The loss of water in the form of vapor from the aerial parts of the plant is known as transpiration. Stomata take water from the xylem vessel to the leaf. 
the water in the xylem behaves like a solid column because of strong force of attraction between water molecules. Evaporation of water through the surface of the leaf creates a suction which pulls water from the xylem cells of roots. And this is how water is transported from bottom to top portions of the plant. Transpiration is very important for the plants. It helps in the absorption and upward movement of water and minerals from roots to the leaves. It also helps in the temperature regulation and protects the plant from heat injury. The stomata are open only during the day. So, during the day, when the stomata are open, the transpiration pull becomes the major driving force in the movement of water in the xylem. During night, when stomata are closed, the transport of water is through root pressure. Now find out how the circulation of food takes place in plants. The transport of food in plants is known as translocation. Food such as sugar is synthesized mainly in the leaves. Now this food has to be transported to all other parts of the plant. The food is transported in the phloem cells. The movement of food in the phloem takes place by utilizing energy. The areas where the food is stored are known as the sinks, example root, and our area where the food gets manufactured is known as the source or in other words, the leaf. The movement of food is always from the source to the sink. At source, leaves food is prepared in the form of glucose. Glucose is converted into sucrose. This sucrose enters into the phloem by spending energy in form of ATP. When source enters the phloem, the osmotic concentration of phloem increases. This high pressure produced in the phloem tissues allow the movement of food to all parts of the plants that have low pressure in their tissues. How did the scientists manage to find out all these details? The phloem sieve tubes are extremely small, so it was not easy for the scientists to study them. However, a small insect called the aphid or green fly helped them a lot. Aphids feed on the plant juices. They pierce the plant tissue and suck the juices through its long needle-like organ called proboscis or stylet. It can be shown that when a feeding aphid is killed and the stem carefully sectioned, the proboscis only penetrates as far as a phloem sieve tube. When the scientists analyze the juice contained in the stylet of the feeding aphid, they noticed that it contained sugar and amino acids. And do you know that aphids absorb a lot of sugar from the phloem, so much that they are not able to digest all of it and it passes it as a sticky syrup called honeydew. Because of this, the leaves which have been attacked by aphids often feel sticky. We know that the conduction of sugars of food is done by the phloem. If we remove all tissues of a plant from the cabium outwards, including the phloem, and study the tissues above and below the ring, we will find out that food will only be present above the ring, but not below it. Why? Because it couldn't go down because of the damaged phloem. The stem of the plant may also increase in thickness above the ring, but no growth will take place below it because the lower portion will be devoid of food. So, if the phloem of a plant is damaged, the food is not able to reach down to the roots and the tree eventually dies. You must have seen animals like squirrels often damaging the bark of the trees. In doing that, they harm the phloem of the trees. Animals like the voles, rabbits and squirrels damage the trees and plants trying to eat the food stored in the inner layers of the bark. Foresters try to keep off these animals by enclosing new plantations with wire netting. 
They also encourage predators such as foxes, badgers, hawks and owls to control the population of voles, squirrels and rabbits that harm the trees. By now, you know everything about the human circulatory system. Now think about this. Do plants also have a system of transporting food and water? Like us, of course they do. Let's learn more about it. By the end of this module, you have learnt about the process of circulation of water, minerals and food in the plants, definition of transpiration, define translocation, write about the role of xylem and phloem in the transport of materials in plants.